Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. In this lesson, I'm going to practice all of the different kind of electron configurations that we've learned. Regular or plain, complete, entire electron configurations using the periodic table as a guide. Noble gas notation, that's that shortcut using the noble gas in brackets. Also going to go over orbital notations. And I wanna take a quick look at how to use the orbital notation to look at the four quantum numbers. Grab your notes, you are going to need a periodic table. Also grab that periodic table that has the blocks labeled. I'm gonna show you mine, but you're gonna want yours. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's practice entire electron configurations, the complete electron configuration. So if I ask for the entire or the complete configuration, this is what I'm looking for. So if we're looking for sodium, now you would need your other periodic table in front of you to see that sodium is number 11. So I'm gonna find that on my periodic table. I'm going to 3s. Now that's my ending configuration. So I'm not going to have to count as I go until I add up to 11. I'm going to go starting at my lowest energy and I'm gonna go all the way to 3s1. Let me show you what that looks like using the periodic table as a guide. So I know my first sublevel is 1s, so that's what I'm going to write first, 1s. And we know that before you can get to the next sublevel, the previous sublevel has to be full. This is our first sublevel. We know we wanna go beyond that, so it's gotta be full. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a two. Okay, so we've taken care of 1s. What comes next? 2s. So I'm gonna write 2s. Again, it's gotta be full, two. After 2s comes 2p. Now, if you notice, I didn't write 2s1 and 2s2 separately. We lumped them all together. We're just gonna keep going through the sublevels until we get where we wanna go. So after 2s comes 2p. P has gotta be full, so we're gonna go ahead and put a six. After 2p, oh dang, that's what we're looking for. 3s1, we're done. Remember, this was for sodium. What if I were to look at the ion sodium? Well, sodium is in group one, so sodium is a plus one. That means it's going to have one less electron as normal. One less electron as normal, that means we're not going to have this electron. Na plus one has 10 electrons. And so we would go all the way up to 10, which would only be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let's look at another complete configuration. Let's do something a little bit long, just so you can have practice. Let's look at barium. Barium is number 56. So we're right here. We've got a lot to cover. So again, we're gonna let the periodic table guide us. First comes 1s, next comes 2s. After 2s, 2p. After 2p, 3s. After 3s, 3p. After 3p, 4s. After 4s, we've got 3d. Remember, 3d. If you're wondering how I labeled this periodic table, I have a lesson on that, so make sure and check that link out. Okay, so after 3d, we've got 4p. After 4p, 5s. After 5s, we've got 4d. I should have been writing a smaller hat, shouldn't I? I'm gonna have to wrap around, dang it. After 4d, we've got 5p. After 5p, 6s, oh, look, there we are, 6s, 6s2. Guys, I wanna make sure that you understand something right quick. After 6s, we've got 4f. This is number 56, barium is 56 right here. Look, 57 right there. So it goes 6s, 4f, back up to 5d. Let me write that down. You would go, you would go from 6s, next would be 4f, then you would come back to 5D, 57 through 70, 71. That's why I like this periodic table with the atomic numbers in it. It helps. Electron configuration, the complete entire configuration. Those are my practice problems. Let's do noble gas notation next. Okay, y'all, let's practice some noble gas notation. If you need some explanation, if you're just starting and you don't know what to do, this is not where you need to start. This is practice problem. So make sure and check that lesson out. I'm linking it up above right now. Noble gas notation. Remember, we're going to use the noble gases. The noble gases are this last group. We're using them because they have a full valence shell. Let's just jump right into an example. Let's look at cobalt. 
cobalt. Let's find cobalt right quick. Here's cobalt. So we need to find the noble gas that comes before cobalt. I normally take the end of my pencil, touch the element, go all the way to the end. Now that's the noble gas that comes after our element. So if we go up one, that's the one that comes before, argon. So I'm gonna write argon in brackets. When we write argon in brackets, we are not having to account for the first 18 electrons. 18 electrons because that's how many electrons argon has. We need to start accounting for the very next electron. Well, the very next electron is the 19th electron, so that puts us here. So remember, you're gonna start with the next element after your noble gas. Because in essence, the noble gas notation is only going to be the notation of the period that the element in question is in. Now, if my periodic table that I have here does not have the periods numbered, it is helpful when they are numbered. So we've got period one, period two, three, four, five, six, seven. So since we're talking about here, we're gonna start with four S because this is the S block. Four S is where we're gonna start. Four S two, because we need to go all the way to cobalt, which is three D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three D seven. And y'all, that's the noble gas notation. I know it's a little bit of a shortcut. Let's look at another example. I wanna do something down below. Let's look at Laurentium. Laurentium, right here. So the noble gas that comes before Laurentium. So here is where this would fit in, 57. So if we're thinking about the noble gas, it's gotta be a noble gas less than 57, 54. 54 is less than 57. This is our noble gas. Okay, so we are doing the noble gas notation for Laurentium. And we just decided that our noble gas is xenon. So if we're starting with xenon, the very next thing we need to add would be 6s. 6 because that's what period we're in. S because that's the block. 6s2. After 6s, 4f, and we're at 4f1. Now I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. There's a couple of exceptions to some rules down here. It gets a little bit tricky. I don't teach those exceptions. I do it straight on like there is no, like there is nothing janky with the periodic table. But y'all, I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. There's something janky going on right here. And I just don't teach that part. So if you're following me and I'm missing something here that your teacher is like, you gotta have, I might not be the person to help you. I'm so sorry. Noble gas notation. I hope that helped. Let's do some orbital notation. Okay, so this is going to be examples over orbital notation. With electron configuration and noble gas notation, we just looked at energy levels and sublevels. We have not looked at orbitals, and that is what orbital notation is going to do. So we're actually going to be drawing blanks, and they're gonna represent orbitals. Okay, let's just jump right in. This is very, very, very similar to electron configuration. It's just like expanded form. So if we were going to write the orbital notation, let's say for copper, this might get a little long, so I'm gonna to try to use this space at the bottom for copper. Copper is number 29. I'm gonna mark that here, 29. We're gonna end with 3D9. So we're gonna start like we always do. You start at the lowest energy, that is 1S. But S has one orbital. P has three orbitals. D has five orbitals, F has seven orbitals. So since S only has one orbital, I'm gonna draw one blank. After one S, we get two S. So two S, again, that's an S, so it only gets one blank. After two S, we get two P. P is gonna get three blanks because it has three orbitals. One, two, three, and I'm gonna label that two P. After two P, we get three S, Again, that's an S, so it's gonna get one blank. After three S, we've got three P. P, again, three blanks, but this time I'm labeling it three P. After three P, we've got four S, another S, another one blank. After four S, three D, where we need to be. D has five, three D. We've got our orbitals done. Now, to do orbital notation, we've gotta talk about Hun's rule. And if you need a full explanation on orbital notation, I have a lesson on orbital notation. Go check that out. This is just an abbreviated version. But remember, Hun's rule says all of your orbitals 
have to have an electron of the same spin before you can have one of the opposite spin, which just means each orbital needs to have an electron before you start doubling up. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I go through orbital notation. Now I know I'm going to go all the way to 3D. This is where I'm going to have a partially filled sublevel because this is where I'm ending. But all of this before, all of this before is going to be full. So S is going to have two electrons. They have to be paired. So one is going to be a positive spinning electron. The other one's gonna be a negative spinning electron. Same thing with 2S, we'll have an up and a down. P. I'm gonna model Hun's rule. We have to go up, 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 one, two, three, before you start doubling up with five, six, seven. So you're going up, 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 and then down, down, down. Now I realize they have up, down, up, down, up, down, and I can't tell, and you're right, I can't tell, but I will be able to tell if you're doing it correctly on the very last sublevel. I'm just modeling for good practice. So again, S is gonna be an up and a down. P, we've got an up, an up, and an up, and then a down, and a down, and a down. Hun's rule, up, down. Now 3D, I've gotta think. 3D, nine. So I need to place nine electrons in 3D. So I'm gonna go up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one would have been hard to get wrong. Let's do another example. You know what though, before we do another example, I wanna think about four quantum numbers. If I were to ask you for the four quantum numbers for the very last electron placed, you need to be able to do that. Remember the very first quantum number, that's the energy level. That's energy level three. That's gonna be my first number. The next quantum number told us the sublevel. Remember there was a code. Zero means S, one means P, two means D. Oh, two means D, so my next number is two. Now when we put two into that formula, remember we got negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two. Look, those labels match up to those five orbitals. And which electron am I talking about? The one in plus two. That is an up spinning electron, positively spinning. So it gets a positive spin. Let's do another, this whole new thing. Let's do the whole thing again. Okay, for this element, let's do zirconium. Zirconium is number 40. Let's mark that right here. We're gonna end with 4D2. This one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Maybe I can write a little bit smaller, but I really wanted to show you Hun's rule in effect. We're gonna start at the beginning. 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 4S, 3D, after 3D, we've got 4P, after 4P, we've got 5S, and after 5S, we get 4D, and that is where we're gonna end. See, using the periodic table is handy. I didn't have to count electrons. I knew exactly how I needed to build it before I even started building. Okay, so let's place electrons. Now, again, I know all of this is gonna be full. Full, 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 full. Not full, this is where we're going to end. So I'm gonna go through and do my electrons. Up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, down. Here we go. 4D2. 4D2 must look like up, up, and that's it. It must not. It must not look like this. If I had 4D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4D, it must not look like up, down. This is wrong, this is correct. Let's look at the quantum numbers for one of these electrons. Let's say this one right here. Let's do the quantum numbers for that electron. First quantum number, principal quantum number, what energy level is it in? Four. What sublevel is it in? It's in sublevel S, and remember S codes for zero. When we put zero in that when we put zero in that formula for negative L to positive L, you're only gonna get a zero. And you only have one orbital for S, and S's label is always zero. So our third number is also zero. And again, that is because when we use that formula M sub L, positive L to negative L, 
when we put that zero into that formula, this zero comes out. Okay, so we're at four, zero, zero. This is the down one, so it's negative one half. Do we wanna look at one more electrons quantum numbers? What about, well, what about this last one? Let's just do the last one. So four, energy level four. It's a D, so if zero is an S, one is a P, two is a D. When we put two in that formula, we get negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, but we only needed the negative one. That's an up spinning arrow, positive one half. All right, y'all, that's all the practice I have. I really hope that helps. If it doesn't, please make sure and ask some questions. Until next time, bye, y'all.